Hey you guys, long time no see. Sorry, I've been really bad at keeping up with YouTube. I've been enjoying my summer too much and sleeping in past 8 in the morning and just got doing nothing. Doing nothing is so spiritually cleansing sometimes. <laughs> anyway, so Lippy Witch over at the Biophilic Alternative, um, she's one of the hosts now, she today or yesterday posted um, a tag video so this is my continuation of that tag um, it's the being comfortable in your own skin tag and um, I just wanted to make some clarifications before I dive into the tag um, some things that were mentioned in the original tag video of like wearing makeup and how you present yourself in, on YouTube and um, kind of the assumption that if you do your hair and wear make a lot of makeup and whatever, you know, if you present yourself that way on YouTube, especially for women, that is somehow a sign of a lack of self-esteem or confidence in your body as it naturally is. So I kind of wanted to like debunk some of those things. I still agree overall with the the general sentiment of the tag, so don't get me wrong, but um yeah, I just wanted to like make some clarifications. So like the makeup thing. I personally have not worn makeup since my wedding day and that was in 2014. <laughs> like nothing, no lipstick, no mascara, no foundation, nothing. And it's not because I'm like a raging uh, stereotypical feminist. I am a raging feminist, but not in like the ignorant way that um People who are ignorant of feminism like to depict feminists as these like hairy legged, hairy arm pitted, butch lesbians. Which, first of all, why is that a bad thing if that is how you choose to be in this world? <laughs> anyway, <sighs> patriarchy sucks. So anyway, so like, I'm um I'm not against makeup as because I'm a feminist um, and like I just said that stereotype stereotyped idea of what a feminist or what being a feminist is that idea is just the product of the patriarchal culture and world that we still live in um, but I just hate wearing makeup because I hate the feeling of it on my face. Like, I hate the idea that I can't just rub my eyes if I need to, if my eye itches, you know? And I hate taking it off. It also makes me, like, break out. Um, so, yeah. But, for people who do choose to wear makeup, first of all, for many of them it is a choice. And, who am I to judge them for that choice? But also for some people, it's a necessity. For example, um, for many professional women, if they come to the office or come to work without makeup on, they will be judged as not looking professional because for a woman to look professional is to look feminine. It's to perform femininity, right? Um, also for many, not all, but many of the transgendered women that I'm familiar with or I know, um, they also wear makeup uh, in the performance of femininity. Drag queens wear makeup too. Like, there are, you know, so wearing makeup, it's a need for many people and it's also a choice. So, like, I have no qualms about it. I just choose not to because it feels icky on my face and I'm also just too lazy to have to put it on and take it off and it's also expensive and I'm a poor grad student so I don't have money for that <laughs> um, so getting back to the original point of the video of being comfortable in your own skin I just got out of the shower so my hair is still kind of like all over the place but this is not the first time I have appeared in on YouTube in this state. I've appeared on YouTube with like breakouts because hey you know hormones are a bitch sometimes and I break out. Whatever. Um, yeah so like I'm 
just because of my personality and how I am, I don't give too much of a shit about how I look, but I also, because of the career path I'm taking, being in academia, I have um, more wiggle room about that, because, uh, especially in the humanities, I don't know how, like, the hard sciences are, but in the humanities side, um, it's much more acceptable to not wear makeup and to have facial piercings and visible tattoos. Like, so I have that luxury of, of wearing makeup and doing my hair, um, of it really being a choice and not like a requirement, an unspoken rule for the job, so to speak, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, like just being comfortable in your own skin, I think it implies, uh, the choice of how you want to present that skin, um, keeping in mind that we construct our realities, so like not just gender and race being a social construction, but also things like virginity being a social construction. The idea of nudity is also a social construction. So even the idea of like being in your own skin, that is a construction, right? And so keeping that in mind, it means that we each get to decide how we define that construction. So if being comfortable in your own skin means like you like to put on lipstick and a little bit of foundation and mascara and like curl your hair a little bit before walking out the door. That's how you define being comfortable in your own skin. If you're like me, it means like just making sure you're clean <laughs> and like brush your hair every once in a while. Then that's what it means to be comfortable in your own skin. Um, so... Another thing that the Lippy Witch mentioned in her original tag video was like talking openly about some of the imperfections. And I kind of want to like go into what it means to have an imperfection, keeping in mind that social construction thing that I've just mentioned. Um, having an imperfection, it means you also have a definition of what perfection is. Like to define something means you also define what it is and what it isn't if that makes sense. You know, I defined this bottle of eucalyptus oil as eucalyptus oil because I'm also defining it as what it is not. It is not tea tree oil, for example, or lavender. It's eucalyptus, right? So if I'm defining what, Im what an imperfection is, I'm also defining what a perfection is. And keeping in mind the mass media advertising culture that we live in, um, we are sold that idea of perfection and many times and like this is kind of common knowledge now um, This idea of perfection these supermodels and these like airbrushed and completely fake images of Human body body perfection oftentimes they are You know, they're not racially diverse. They're not body shape diverse you know, and most of us nowadays know that they're all created in, on a computer screen, you know, with airbrushing and, um, I can't remember the name of the computer program, but that program where you can, like, change photographs and stuff. Um, so we all know that that idea of perfection, it's constructed, it's fake, it's sold to us. And also the fact that it's sold to us means that like oftentimes in advertising I've found, especially like advertising geared towards women, a lot of it has to do with this anxiety of not being good enough and so that's what they're selling to you. And like anti-aging cream, you're supposed to feel um, anxiety about aging and so that anxiety is what impels you to go buy that product. Right? So like, we're supposed to feel anxiety about these imperfections because we're sold what the idea of perfection is. We're also told that we're not good enough to reach that unless we buy XYZ product, like oil of Olay face cream or whatever. So keeping all that in mind, <laughs> when we talk about imperfections on or in our bodies, 
we are also assuming or making the assumption that perfection exists, even on an abstract or theoretical level. Um, so instead of, you know, I don't want to point out imperfections in my body, I just want to point out stuff on my body. <laughs> You know, like the fact I have these two moles right here. I have lots of moles. I got that from my, from my dad. All these spots. I have one here. I have a beauty mark here, which is a mole. So I have lots of spots on my, on my skin. Um, I also have tattoos, which I'm going to make a video about that, about each of these tattoos. I have four. Um, here soon. It's been an idea I've been rolling around in my head is like telling the story of each of my tattoos. So that's probably something that I'll start later this week. Um, I have a scar on my elbow right here from when I was in sixth grade and I fell off my scooter and nearly broke my elbow. Um, my front two teeth don't line up exactly. Per perfectly, <laughs> whatever that means, um, yeah, so like, this is my body, and like, I just wanted to add to that, be comfortable in your own skin tag, and like, kind of make some clarifications about it, um, so like, continue on the tag, so like, tag your it if you want to, make your own version of this tag, or you know, tell me what you think in the comments below about this idea of like imperfections versus perfection or what it what does it exactly mean to be comfortable in your own skin? You know, does it mean you have to be brave enough to show up on camera without makeup on and like why do we think that's brave? You know? Like what judgments might me might we be making about people who do put on makeup on? or put on makeup before they get in front of the camera, you know? So that's my own twist about this tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be making another video here soon. Um, the second part of my what does it mean to be a seer, a seer series. Um, and this second part's going to be a little bit more witchy about um, focusing more on like some personal experiences I've had and how I'm trying to make sense of those experiences. So. Yes. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment below. What does it mean to be comfortable in your own skin? Right? Bye!